Beyond the Badge is brought to you by Edina Alarm and the Edina Crime Prevention Fund. Welcome to Beyond the Badge, a program about the inner workings of the Edina Police Department. Thanks for joining us. I'm Officer Brian Hubbard. Whenever you see flashing red lights on the roadway, remember to move over. State law requires all drivers to move over when passing a stopped emergency vehicle. On roads with two or more lanes, keep a full lane between your car and any ambulance, fire truck, tow truck, or law enforcement vehicle parked on the shoulder. If you are not able to safely move a lane away, slow down. The move over law was passed in 2001 after Minnesota State Patrol Trooper Ted Foss was killed while conducting a traffic stop on Interstate 90 in Minnesota. Corporal Foss had stopped a vehicle for speeding and was speaking to the driver when another vehicle veered over and struck his squad car. The move over law was created after a state trooper was killed down in the southern part of Minnesota back in 2000 and from my benefit and perspective as the patrol lieutenant. I think it's been a great benefit for the officers working traffic. I mean, the law was created to make it safer for the officers to be out there doing their job. Ignoring this law endangers the law enforcement officers, firefighters, emergency medical personnel, and tow truck drivers who provide critical and often life-saving services on Minnesota roadways. Failure to move over could get you a ticket and a fine. With school beginning soon, the Edina Police Department also reminds motorists to always stop for school buses. Whether on a city street, highway, or county road, and regardless of the speed limit and number of lanes, motorists must stop when approaching a stopped school bus from either direction. A number of area youth are playing an important role in the Edina Police Department. The Edina and Eden Prairie Police Explorers Program is for young people aged 14 through 21 who are interested in law enforcement. Let's go now to Officer Aaron White, who is at the South Metro Public Safety Training Facility, with Officer David Busalis and Explorer Paul Lynch to tell us more. Thanks, Brian. We're at South Metro Public Training Facility again with some guests to talk about the Edina Eden Prairie Police Explorer Program. And I'm joined by Officer Dave Busalis. Dave, thanks for being here. Thank you. And Paul Lynch, who is uh, a participant in the Explorer Program right now. Thanks, guys. Paul, appreciate you being here. You Dave, let's start with you. Let's give people an idea. What is uh, Explorers? What's it all about? It's a program for teenagers between the ages of 14 and 21 years old. Um, they're usually in junior high or high school. It's a program that helps them learn more about law enforcement. Basically what we do is we meet on a weekly basis um, every Tuesday and we have training. Every week is a different um, topic that we cover. One week might be crime scene investigation, search and arrest, traffic stops. We actually go hands-on with the kids and teach them that. So it's all career oriented towards law enforcement to give them Correct. a little flavor of what yeah. goes on. And then we have a state and national competition. So you're currently an advisor. Correct. Also important to note, though, that you came up through the program. Yep. You were a participant when you were in high school. Did that have uh, a big impact on being able to get a job in law enforcement? And It helped. It uh, gives you a little edge on other people that might not understand um, about law enforcement. So it definitely helped. And it helps kids not only if they get into law enforcement, but any other profession. Um, it kind of gives them the um, tools sure. um, in life. So. Paul, how about you now? How did you get involved in Explorers and why? Well, I, I heard about it young as a kid. Um, I was growing up, I heard about it a lot. And then I saw an article when they went to their nationals in Flagstaff, Arizona, and I saw that they got first place. And I was just happy I wanted to be on that post. So the first time I could, I gave Officer Erica Halverson a call for the Eden Prairie Police Department. She's one of our advisors. And that's an important note, is that the post is actually a cooperative effort between both the Edina and the Eden Prairie Police Departments. Yeah, and I really think that's a great way to learn because both sides are different and similar in many, many ways. And it just, you get to learn from each department and it's a lot of fun. And Paul, you're gonna be a senior at Eden Prairie High School next year, right? Yep. Any aspirations as you've uh, participated in Explorers? Do you think this may lead to a career in law enforcement for you? It may. I've uh, looked at that a lot. I've also looked at other public safety like EMS or fire as well. So Dave told us a little bit about some of the things you do. What have been some of the training opportunities you've enjoyed most with Explorers? Um, well, it's really hands-on and they, they teach us very well because it's their profession. They do it every day. And uh, we also get to help out with 
help train them as um, role players. So we'll be training them sometimes or the SWAT team. Sure. And it's, it's a lot of fun because you get to know those guys and you get to see what their training is like. It's different in every aspect of police. And there's a service aspect as well. You guys volunteer your time to assist the police department at community events, uh, traffic direction functions, that sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a lo it's a lot of fun. I, I think that's the best part of it, serving your community. And Dave, you'd mentioned participation in both state and national level competitions. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. The state competitions are basically all the explorer posts within the state of Minnesota. There's probably well over 100 of them. They all get together at, uh, this last year was in Rochester, and then they all um, compete against each other in different competitions. It could be crime scene search, um, traffic stop investigation, traffic accident investigation, and then the advisors. Um, some come down that are advisors and some are just other police officers come down and grade the kids. And at the end, there's a uh, award ceremony. Paul, these competitions, as a participant, have you found them to be pretty competitive? They really are. Um, the judges are all police officers or all have some base in public safety. Basically, they don't, they don't give you any guidance. You're using all your training and they're just keeping an eye on what you're doing. If uh, people are interested in participating, what, what do they need to do? Well, in the fall every year, we have a, um, basically a time where they come in and apply for it. Um, and it's in September, usually the beginning of the school year. And uh, they come in, fill out an application, and they'll go through an interview process and join the post. Well, both of you, thank you for uh, telling us a little bit more about Police Explorers, Officer Dave Busalis, and participant, Explorer Paul Lynch. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll return to Brian in the studio. One of the most visible divisions of the Edina Police Department patrols the city on all fours. The Edina K-9 unit recently welcomed a new recruit in June, but the training and legwork began months before. Edina 16 reporter Kalen Martin and photojournalist Steve Christensen followed new K-9 officer Jason Bear throughout the process and have the story. The dogs, they, they've, uh, they don't know come, they don't know sit, they don't know anything. On February 10th, Edina police officer Jason Bear arrived at the Timothy Jones K-9 training facility in St. Paul to meet his new partner. This is the start of your K-9 career. His partner is Edina's newest K-9 cop, Blade. Uh, what I anticipate are probably some pretty good challenges. I guess that's one of the things that I also look forward to and as far as being a handler. I go out, we're going to all go out in the kennels together. Watch what the dogs do. That's why you have to be very careful. I guess uh, there's a lot of unknowns associated with getting the dog. Uh, you know, I've heard it referred to as like having a kid. You just, you don't know what it's going to be like. All these dogs have been imported from Europe, and the reason we import them is because of genetics. They're bred specifically to be police dogs. I pulled this up my face like that. You see what could happen, folks? So we want to be... Very, very careful. After the dog's arrival, Bear and Blade had a month to get to know each other before starting their intense 12-week training program. The main concern was obviously my wife and then the other dog, how they were going to get along or if he was going to destroy the house. Blade, a two-year-old German shepherd born from a long bloodline of Slovakian police dogs, surprised Bear by how well he adjusted to his new home. Jason in particular was a very talented individual, which I attribute to a lot of experience working with Kevin Raffadal, Mike Seeger, and some of the other canine handlers in the West Metro. And it's a skill. You have to learn the skill, and the only way you learn it is through exposure and through doing it and making mistakes. Bear and Blade begin their training in March. During the program for new canines and handlers, the dogs are schooled in agility, obedience, tracking, criminal apprehension, and handler protection. And these dogs, believe it or not, would not make very good pets because of those behaviors. They need to be active, they need to be working. They go, go, go. While the canines were learning skills to take to the streets, the handlers were learning how to work with their new partner. It's more conditioning the handler, figuring out how the dogs work, how they play, and that kind of thing. So it is definitely, the 12 weeks is more for the handler than it is for the dog. We've had handlers that actually have chosen to leave training eight, nine, ten weeks in the class because they've realized that this isn't for them. Despite the challenge, Bear and Blade came out on top. It's 12 weeks and it's probably the most demanding police training that I've ever been involved in. The pair graduated in May. From the Edina Police Department, we have Officer Jason Bear, his canine Blade. Graduation was kind of our first, uh, first demo at, at all for any of these dogs. So it was basically to showcase what we'd done the, the entire 12 weeks. The reason these dogs do what they do is one reason. They're obedient. 
They sit, they down, they stand, they jump these hurdles, they bite, they search, they track because they are obedient. Good boy! Yeah, that's a good boy! Bear and Blade began work in June. Been going great so far. They join Mike Seeger and Diesel in the Edina K-9 program. No way you could do it without help like that. It's where it'd be tough to be a, a single dog department and have to rely on everybody else all the time and not have someone else in-house, especially Mike with the four years experience that he's had with Diesel is a, a huge help with Blade. Police canines typically cost around $8,000 and depending on their health, have a working life of five to seven years. Ta-da boy. Community support is, is number one. Uh, that we couldn't have the, the canine program without the community support. Becoming a canine handler has been a childhood dream for me. It's, it's something that's always been in the back of my head. They turned into a great police service dog team. With Steve Christensen, I'm Kaylin Martin, Edina 16. Another highly visible group within the police department is Edina's Community Service Officers, or CSOs. Three part-time community service officers currently support the efforts of the Edina Police Department. CSOs are typically college-age men and women who aspire for careers in law enforcement. They are knowledgeable and flexible in their assignments as they are asked to perform duties within every division of the department. Let's go back out in the field to Officer Aaron White to tell us more about the work and the training of Edina's CSOs. Thanks, Brian. I'm with Community Service Officer Jacob Price today to learn a little bit about what he does at the police department. Thanks for joining us, Jake. Thanks for having me. Jake, let's start with a day in the life. What does a community service officer do at the Edina Police Department? Well, as a community service officer, um, I'm a non-sworn um, officer for the department. Uh, what I do is uh, I take care of non-law enforcement issues. Uh, for example, I transport evidence, uh, transport confidential information, take care of animal complaints, and I assist officers on various details. Okay. Administrative tasks that prevent uh, officers from having to do some of the dirty work, it sounds like. Exactly. Okay. Um, how long have you been with the department now? Three and a half years. And you have been a student um, pursuing a career yourself as a licensed law enforcement officer, right? That is correct. Where are you at in that process? Uh, I just completed. Uh, I just received my bachelor's degree in law enforcement. Ha would you say that this has been a good experience uh, moving towards that goal? Yes, uh, going to school and being a, a community service officer uh, gave me a great, advan great advantage in school. Um, kind of got ahead by knowing some of the things that other students didn't know and um, I was actually able to learn more and build on top of that uh, by learning everything that I have as a CSO and um, getting my degree. Great. Quite a few current officers served as CSOs at the department, right? That's correct. Animal control is a big thing you uh, deal with. Yes. Um, what are some of the more common issues out there that people should be aware of with uh, animal regulations and rules in the city? Uh, well, the top two that I deal with is animal at large. That's probably the top one, uh, where people don't know that sometimes people don't know that their dogs are running at large. Uh, they're at large means that they're not on their property. Uh, they're out on the street or they're on somebody else's property. Sure. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware that their dog has to be on their property, dog or cat, uh, for that matter, um, has to stay on their property. Uh, and another call that I go to is uh, animals that are uh, in vehicles when it's really hot out. That's sure. another call that I receive quite often. Um, if people are going into the store, uh, a lot of people think that um, staying in the animal being in the car for just a few minutes is fine. Mm -hmm. But when it's really hot and re really humid, um, it really can take a lot out of the dog. And really recommend that people leave their animals at home sure. when they uh, go to the store. And those are things that people can be cited for actually receive uh, tickets and that sort of thing if they're not following the rules. That is correct. So this is a good example that even in a non-sworn capacity, doing animal control and those sorts of tasks, your job is not always easy out there. That is correct. Well, good luck with your future as a, hopefully a police officer in the near future. Thank you. And thanks for your service to the Diana Police Department. We appreciate you telling us a little bit about what you do. Jacob Price, a community service officer with the Diana Police Department, and we'll return to Brian in the studio. Besides providing critical support to the police department, Edina's CSO program continues to turn out top quality police officer candidates. This is a direct result of the high standards each CSO must meet in order to be hired, the ongoing training they receive, and the job responsibilities they are given. 
Before becoming CSOs or even police explorers, many aspiring police officers take part in Edina's junior police program. The police department, with assistance from the Edina Morningside Rotary Club, will again lead the annual program later this year. For more than 25 years, officers have been going to second or third grade classrooms to share safety messages and explain the roles of police officers in the community. The junior police program emphasizes safety at home, at school, and out in the community. What we do is uh, our officer goes in um, with one of our uh, reserve officers, so we try and double team it. Um, they go into the schools and the first meeting we meet all the kids. In some of the bigger schools it can be up to over 100 kids in the, uh, the first meeting. Um, we answer some questions, we go through the whole book um, talking about uh, the program and, and uh, how to be the eyes and ears of the community. Officers are also often joined by Rotarians who assist and talk about volunteerism. Rotary basically came up with this program about 30 years ago and uh, uh, actually my dad was one of the forerunners that started the program and we've been there. Um, what they do is they, they pay for the books, the badges, um, and then they come with us the second time and they explain to us what Rotary is to the kids. Um, we talk about positive um, groups to be in and that's one that adults are in that we tell them. Participating children are given activity books, fingerprinted, and given junior police badges at the conclusion of the program. Whenever possible, we alert viewers to recent crime trends and highlight some special cases. Think it's safe to leave valuables in your car unlocked in your driveway? Think again. As many residents in Northeast Edina learned this summer, if you leave a vehicle in your driveway overnight, it's an easy target for thieves. And it's not just your cell phone, CDs, iPod, or other gadgets that they are interested in. If you leave your garage door opener in your car, a perpetrator can open the door and steal valuables inside your garage or home, all while you are sound asleep. Besides locking your car doors, it's a good idea to install outdoor motion lights in all vulnerable areas. In early June, a rash of vandalism hit local churches west of Minnesota Highway 100. Reddish-brown paint was sprayed on the walls of Good Samaritan United Methodist, St. Patrick's, Jehovah's Witnesses, Normandale Lutheran, Crossview, Colonial, and St. Albans Episcopal Churches. In the beginning of June, several Edina churches were victimized by graffiti. Uh, the graffiti style is related to occult symbols. If by chance uh, you do hear anything about this crime, please contact the Edina Police Department. A crime alert was issued immediately after the rash of church vandalisms. For the first time, Edina's reverse 911 system, Code Red, was also used to get the word out in the affected neighborhoods. Code Red allows city officials to deliver urgent, pre-recorded emergency telephone messages to targeted areas or the entire community at a rate of up to 60,000 calls per hour. Messages could be sent to warn residents of storms, hazardous material spills, illness outbreaks or pandemics, terrorist attacks, or other emergencies. All messages begin with the phrase, this is a Code Red message from the city of Edina. If you do not answer your phone, the system will try again up to three times. We have the ability to type in an address or an intersection or a general location and uh, call residents within a certain radius of that location to notify them of an incident or we can call the entire city. Uh, Code Red gives us that flexibility. We were able to use Code Red uh, in relation to the church vandalism incidents by um, entering in the address of each church that was affected and calling residents within a quarter mile radius of that church. Phone numbers are supplied by the city's telephone database of properties in the community. To ensure no one is omitted, all individuals and businesses are urged to visit the city's website at www.cityofedina.com police and submit their cell phone or other numbers to be called in an emergency. You may also opt out of the program by visiting the website. On behalf of my co-host, Officer Aaron White, and the rest of the officers of the Edina Police Department, Thanks for tuning in to learn a little bit more of what goes on beyond the badge. Stay safe. Beyond the Badge is brought to you by Edina Alarm and the Edina Crime Prevention Fund.